Welcome to another training video of PLC programming. In today's video we will see how we can establish PLC to PLC communication via Ethernet. Before starting this session I will request you guys to please subscribe my channel for more upcoming exciting training videos. Let's start today video. First we will make a project and add a local S7300 station. Now we will go to hardware configuration and add a PLC with Profinet option. So we can use S7315 PNTP PLC. We can change the IP address of the PLC if required. Create Ethernet network and click OK. Now we will add another S7300 station and this will be remote station. As we did earlier go to the hardware configuration and add 315 PLC. We will change its IP address because local and remote PLC stations should have different IP addresses. Select Ethernet communication and click OK. From PLC setting we will enable the clock memory byte and click OK. What is clock memory byte you can see from the table on left. Now we will enable the clock memory byte in the local PLC. We can rename the PLC as local and remote so that will be easy to understand programming. Now we will go to the network configuration. Here you can see local and remote PLC are coupled with Ethernet network. Now we will add new connection for local PLC. As you can see that it automatically selects remote PLC. Click OK and verify the IP addresses for local and remote PLC. Now setting is ok but there is a problem both local ID and partner ID is one which is wrong. To change the remote PLC ID open the settings of the remote PLC and change its ID to 2. Now we go the programming blocks of the local PLC and two data blocks which will be used to send data to remote PLC and receive data from remote PLC. First we will add DB1 which will be used to send data to remote PLC.
Now create DB2 to receive the data from remote PLC. Open the DB1 and create two integer tags in it. The data we will write in these tags will go to the remote PLC. Now open DB2 and create two integer tags in it. Data coming from the remote PLC will be received in these tags. Now to make work easy we will just copy these two data blocks and paste them in the remote PLC programming blocks. Now just rename these data blocks. Now DB1 in remote PLC will be used to send data to local PLC. DB2 in remote PLC will be used to receive data coming from local PLC. Now we will go to the organization block 1 of the local PLC. Drag and drop the get function on the ladder. Get function will be used to read data from remote PLC. Now this function need a data block to operate we will assign DB14 for get function. Request is a input to execute the get function whenever this input signal goes from low to high. We will use clock memory bit M05. Address is a pointer to data block which is to be read on the remote PLC. The data block 1 for remote PLC is highlighted in green. We will point towards this data block. Road is a pointer to data block where data received from remote PLC will be stored. In the local PLC the data block 2 for local PLC is highlighted in green. We will point towards this data block.
Now we will use the put instruction. Put instruction is used to send data to remote PLC. Address is a pointer to data block where data is to be written in remote PLC. The data block 2 for remote PLC is highlighted in red. It will point towards this data block. SD is a pointer to data block which is used to send data to remote PLC. The data block 2 for local PLC is highlighted in red. We will point towards this data block. Now create the variable table for local PLC and we will add tags which we have created in the data blocks to send and receive data from remote PLC. Now we will copy this variable table and paste in the programming blocks of the remote PLC and rename it as local. Now we will keep these variable tables side by side. All tags will be created in it automatically. Just need to change its comments. Now we open PLC simulator and download program for local PLC in it.
Now we will open another PLC simulator and download program for remote PLC in it. Run both PLC. Now come back to the variable table and go online and monitor tags. We can change the display format of the tags to decimal. Now whatever we will write in the DB1 tag 0 of local PLC it will go to the DB2 tag 0 in the remote PLC. Now whatever we will write in the DB1 tag 2 of remote PLC it will go to the DB2 tag 2 in the remote PLC. Similar way we can verify other tags also. So this is today's video I hope you like it. Please subscribe my channel to stay connected with me. Till next video take care and goodbye.